What is up YouTube tool tubers of the world? My name is Brad. Welcome to the workbench. And if you saw last week's tool haul, you know we ended right here with these heart tools. Well, let's pick it back up. Let's go in, we'll open up all the packages. We'll see what the features are and just have a nice first look at what this tool line is bringing to the table. You gotta have heart. All you really need is heart. Guys, we got everything out of the packages. As you can see, I'm testing out the first product, and that is these heart gloves. Looked them up on the website, about $15. See, they're like a nylon, it feels like. Somewhat stretchy. Some padding right here. Uh, I prefer padding on my knuckles. It's just what I'm used to in the oil field. I hate these things. These, these little tabs will usually get cut off. I never put my gloves like that. And they're also touchscreen sensitive, which is what I'm testing now as I film this video. The three-piece pry bar set here. Uh, lots of people call them nail pullers. I always call them flat bars. Now it's nice when you have a small one like this that it is skinny. Now it's not gonna be as strong. It does it does deform quite a bit. I guess you can't really see that. Let me try to do it like this. But it comes back, so it's very springy. I don't know how that'll work out. This three piece set's only ten dollars. And it is made in China. So I don't want to spend too much time on a pry bar set. Let's just keep it rolling. Some Allen keys here. Ball in on one side, regular on the other. Now these these L keys, they seem all right, you know. They'll do, I, I wouldn't call them professional grade. So I wasn't quite sure what this was. So you see you got different size slots. You can move this this way. Drop that bad boy down in there. Slide this little collar over it. And now you have more leverage. You know, it's not really making it a T-handle like we like, but you could get even more leverage on here. But the fact of the matter is, with it being all plastic, how much leverage can you really get from it? It's definitely not comfortable. You got these little things digging in your hands. If you hold it down here, it just kind of feels weird. I'm not really digging this little plastic part. You really need that much torque on a Allen key Probably has some Allen sockets somewhere around that you can put on a ratchet. Granted, we have to keep in mind when looking at all these tools, these are mainly DIY, non-tool addicted people like us, like most of the people watching this. This is for city folk that might... <laughs> city folk, city men that, that might just need to put together a piece of Ikea furniture. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not at all. Let's take a look at their hammer. It's a heart 16 ounce hammer, right? Doesn't seem too bad. Feels a lot, I want to say, like the Stanley Anti-Vibe with that kind of handle. Or the Fat Max now, I guess. It's a comfortable hammer. It's only 16 ounces, which again, is going to be perfect for somebody in a home, a homeowner, a DIYer. One of the features it has that's a newer, new age feature, and I haven't had any hammers that have had this feature yet because my hammers are pretty old. They've lasted quite a while. But one of the new features is this little magnet on top. You see it's got a little groove right here and a slot right here. That's supposed to be so you can take a nail, put it right there, and you can start it one-handed. It's kind of in contrast to what they're supposed to be about because I don't think many DIYers are going to be reaching up so high that they can't, you know, use two hands. Maybe it'll protect your fingies. I mean, this will be a quick test. Let's, let's give it a shot. Let me get a piece of wood. I got a couple pieces of uh, melamine, is basically what it is, particle board. So we got the nail in there. Let me just do a, a quick little whack. Let's nail these two together. I guess I could see a few occasions where it would be handy. I mean, while we got it here, let's, let's check out the nail pullers. That one seemed to do okay. Let's get a little bitty guy out here on the finishing nail. Oh, she's flexing. 
Okay, so I definitely wouldn't consider this a a real nail bar. Maybe for like a trim nail or something, uh, or to to get up some some baseboard paneling. But ah! The the medium sized one does pretty good. And, this one I think would be more of a pry tool anyways. That's why it's nice and thin. Let's get this cleared off and we'll take a look at the tape measure and then some power tools. Right, tape measure, magnetic. It's got the button up front, which I prefer. I'm not a, a lever lock guy, but it's also got the button at the bottom that you can press to hold it. It's, it's like a little brake. You let go and it comes in. I'm typically used to just put my finger there. Actually, I have to press harder on the brake to keep it from coming in than if I just place my finger there. The, the belt clip did not survive the packaging, although I wasn't the nicest on it. I basically just got it out of there. I'm not going to try to hide anything. I made a mistake. I brought it out of the packaging too rough, but I've taken other tape measures out of packaging just like I took this one out that had a solid belt clip like the old Stanley's. They didn't have a problem with it. It does have a magnetic tip, fairly strong magnet. Of course, you're not gonna be doing this. You're gonna put it to a stud or, or a nail. Let's see. Yes, and this is a galvanized nail, but it is strong enough to keep a hold of a nail. Actually, it almost feels stronger on the nail than the hammer. Let me clear off some of these hand tools and let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. I like them french fried potatoes. So we're going to bring the 5 inch random orbital sander front and center. This is a cordless 20 volt sander. It's a pretty, pretty basic. You got on, you got off. Uh, I would like to see variable speed on it would be a cool feature. But other than that, I mean, I really can't say too much more about it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this was intentional or not, but they didn't send me any 20 volt batteries. So I'm not complaining. I'll go buy my own battery, but it kind of makes it hard to, to really compare it right now. I can't, I can't let y'all see it run or anything. This sander, tool only, is $45. A four amp hour battery runs around 88. Two amp hour, I think it is, runs 50. It's fairly ergonomic. I think it'll, uh, It'll be fine. I've never had a cordless sander. I really don't believe in cordless sanders. I think they just eat up too much battery. But uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Something I was excited to see is a cordless multi-tool. Now I have a cheapo Harbor Freight multi-tool. I don't use these too often, but then again, I don't remember that I have one. And uh, maybe having a cordless one on the bench will inspire me to use one more often. It's, it's lightweight. You know, and as far as the plastic on all these, it's like a uh, Ryobi grade. You know, these are made by TTI. They're, they're gonna be very similar, but it is variable speed. Zero to 20,000 oscillations per minute, I think it says. Uh, it says it has an LED light somewhere, but, <laughs> but I don't have a battery to, to show you. I really like they include the, the sanding pad. Now this is a pretty pretty cheap one little thin piece of metal there but it'll get the job done you know again a homeowner grade stuff here and they give you a couple blades but what I don't like about the blades is they are fully enclosed so that means if I want to change one because it's not a toolless change you got to take this th this little washer doodad that all the way off let's put this one on line that bad boy up with whatever grooves because you can do different angles if you want kind of comes in handy when you're dealing with these things Put your blade on there then you gotta starting it is kind of a pain in the butt because you can't you can't finger start it finger start it oh my tighten it down give it a little oomph, and you're ready to go so toolless blade exchange is where it's at when it comes to multi-tools but if you're not going to be toolless don't enclose your blades all the way at least at least do that for us guys and i'll show you why if you don't enclose your blades all the way since like this riker it's supposed to be a universal blade then you don't have to take this thing all the way out you can just 
slip it on in there and tighten it down. I'm sure these these little blades that came with it aren't the best. These Riker blades I reviewed are pretty good. But as long as you have a blade that isn't fully enclosed like the ones that come with it, you can pop them off, put a new one on fairly easily. If you're in the trades and you use a tool like this fairly often, let me know what you use it for because I use it for weird stuff around the house, but it's not something I really think about. Nothing on it says brushless, so I'm going to assume this is a brushed one just like this uh, orbital sander, but maybe they'll offer a brushless version that has a toolless blade exchange. So we're looking at the Hart 14 inch bar, 40 volt, that's a battery right there. And it's a 40 volt, 4 amp hour, brushless, cordless chainsaw. I don't have any bar oil. <laughs> Heart, if you're out there listening, it'd be cool if you, you would add a little bottle. That way somebody that buys it doesn't get it home and then say, oh shit. I mean, it has a battery, it has everything you need to get started except for bar oil. The power's not there as with gas power tools, but... The convenience is just, that's what gets me. I mean, I don't have to worry about a carburetor. I don't have to worry about the dirty ass fuel we're getting nowadays or the ethanol stuff clogging up carburetors. I got to make sure this battery is charged. I got to make sure it has bar oil, chain is sharp, and I can go to town. That is some very limited maintenance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. <sighs> You got your adjustments there. It's not too heavy. 10, 15 pounds at the most, maybe. It does have a cover for the bar. And here at the bottom is your little tool. Little bitty thing. So you can adjust all your adjustments on the side. Nice little convenient place for it. And then mm -hmm. it also has this little keyway right there. So you could put a screw on your wall. And then you can just hang it up on the trigger here. It has a safety, so you got to pull that back before you can let it fly. On the battery, it does have the power indicator. This is the charger that comes with it. Obviously, you see it says 40 volt there. Pop it on there, set it down, plug it in, and you're good to go. So these newfangled chargers that just slide on the top, I, I like them and I hate them. I like them at times, I guess, because if you're running with your main cordless platform, it is nice to have them all on a board. You put your battery in and out. You couldn't do that with this. It would be cool if they had a tab here, like two tabs up here on this corner and maybe a tab here that you could break off if you didn't want them or keep if you did. And then you could come in and slide your battery up there and it could be just like a wall charger or even upside down would probably be better. But for me right now, it's probably just gonna get balled up, thrown in a filing cabinet I keep tools in and pulled out when I need to charge a damn thing. Granted, I haven't used the thing yet, but I'm pretty impressed with it so far. We'll see how long it holds up. We will come back and review this thing. This is just to show y'all what, what they've got coming out, what they're doing, and like I said, I'm excited for Heart Tools. Not because they are going to, to beat anybody out. They're not going to be the highest quality tools out there. And even their prices aren't the lowest out there. They're priced competitively with Ryobi tools. The thing about heart tools that everybody doesn't see, because everybody just says, oh yeah, they'll be good in a pinch. But where these tools are going to shine is for people like myself that live in rural areas. I don't think enough people are paying attention to the fact that Walmart is everywhere home depot and lowe's yeah there's a lot of them out there but a lot of people are like me or worse than me to where i got a walmart 20 minutes down the road i gotta go an hour 45 minutes if i'm lucky to home depot or lowe's that's where i really think this tool line is going to shine now it's going to take a while people are going to have to use it the word's going to have to get out about it because until they prove themselves, they're just going to be Walmart tools. But once word gets out, if these tools perform as good as, let's say, Ryobi on most accounts, these are going to take off, man. That's my prediction, at least, because Sally Homeowner and Joe DIYer would probably rather spend 
20 minutes driving to a store to get a tool just as good at the same price as Ryobi. The big downfall I see with these tools right now is they're all limited lifetime warranty. Now I'm gonna dive in more, I'm gonna talk to the heart people more about what exactly that means. Are they saying limited lifetime warranty because they don't want people on YouTube breaking shit on purpose and bringing it, being able to bring it back in and return it? Are they not wanting people to misuse it because these are mainly gonna go to DIYers that may not properly know how to use tools and they've just abused the hell out of them? So they wanna have that, that limited version in there to say, uh-uh. We can tell that you put a, a cheater bar on our ratchet. We can tell that you had this thing sitting out in the rain for, for two weeks straight. We're not going to warranty it. So I'm going to dive deeper into that for y'all. We'll talk about it more when the actual review of some of these tools comes out. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this stuff. I'm going to enjoy putting them to use, coming back, and letting y'all know how they did. Until next time, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button down there, and we'll holler at you next time. Peace! All you really need is heart. Not bad. Let's see how it does with the finishing now. If I can find the goddamn thing. That's a toothpick. Where the hell did I put it? I can grab another one there. Film's just a wasting.